at cell tower information in connection with this phone that you were not at home. No, I was at home. No. Listen closely. I'm missing. I was at home. No, you weren't. This phone went to the air area of East 63rd Street. And this phone went into the house. No, I was at home. I never went to the house. I was at of home. Of Kira and your baby. No, no, listen. I was at home. No, listen to me. I'm, I'm listen. Listen, I'm, just pay attention. Okay. The phone records aren't going to lie. The phone records show that this phone left your house. Oh, 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 y'all don't understand. I was at home. I was at home with my grandmother. I was at home. I was at home. That's what I was at. That's what I was at. No. Before a suspect is subjected to due process, certain factors are to be taken into consideration before adjudication. The defendant's mental capacity and whether or not they are competent enough to stand trial. The defendant's criminal history, which helps determine an appropriate sentence to impose. The facts, evidence, and testimonies presented during trial, which will be later cross-examined by both the state and defense which concludes with the final factor, deliberation by a judge or jury. However, what makes the case of Armand Johnson rather intriguing during this process is his extensive criminal record along with his cognitive deficiency as Armand was diagnosed with intellectual disability disorder. To provide a bit of context, on July 8, 2019, Police would report to East 63rd Street and Fleet Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, in response to a victim found laying in an empty parking lot, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. When police arrived on scene, they would make a harrowing discovery. The state's prosecutor, Michael O'Malley, would paint a vivid picture in the mind of the jury, stating that after an argument ensued between Armand and his girlfriend, Takira Collins, in a jealous fit of rage, Armand would fatally shoot Takira 10 times, three of which were from behind, and one to the back of her head. Armand would then use Takira's phone in order to send a fake text message to himself in a poor attempt to cover his tracks. After shooting and killing Takira in her own home, two-year-old Aubrey Stone and his biological son, six-year-old Armand Jr. was asleep inside their room, unaware of the danger that was about to occur. That is when Armand would take Takira's vehicle and retrieve a gas can from his grandmother's garage. Armand would drive back to the residence before dousing the home in gasoline and setting it on fire with the two children still alive inside. Upon further investigation, arson investigators were able to determine that an accelerant had been used to help fuel the fire. But investigators also noted that the house did not engulf into flames due to its double pane windows preventing the glass from shattering, thus preventing oxygen from entering and fueling the fire even further. As a result, both Aubrey Collins and Armand Jr. would suffocate from smoke inhalation as they were unable to escape. Armand exited the residence. 35-year-old David Cousin Jr. was returning from his job when he spotted Armand standing in front of the house. As a result, Armand would shoot and kill David, leaving him to succumb to his injuries in a nearby empty parking lot. When police arrived on the scene, all four victims were pronounced deceased and an investigation would shortly commence in order to find the culprits. After reviewing nearby surveillance systems, Armand was seen fleeing the scene of the crime, where he was later picked up by his mother, who was unaware of what Armand had just done. When uncovering Armand's criminal history, it's revealed that Armand had an extensive criminal record, which includes aggravated robbery, abduction, grand theft, two counts of aggravated theft, and possessing a weapon when he wasn't supposed to. This would be vital information as the state would insinuate that Armand was fully aware of his actions. However, a psychiatric evaluation had been also conducted, which revealed that Armand was diagnosed with numerous ailments, including disruptive behavior disorder, cannabis use disorder, conduct disorder, depressive disorder, and borderline intellectual functioning disorder, which is specifically characterized by having an IQ below 70. This would help aid the defense's arguments, as they claimed Armand would never have committed these crimes had he not been born with this deficiency. 
Two days after the homicide, Armand was apprehended and taken into custody, where he was questioned by two of the lead detectives on the case. The interrogation begins two days after the homicide occurs. Police has already obtained incriminating evidence placing Armand at the scene of the crime, as he was caught on multiple surveillance systems leaving the area. Not only that, but cell phone data would reveal that Armand was indeed at Takira's residence the time the murders occurred. So how are you doing today? Better? A little bit better? Have you had a chance to talk to anybody? No, you have talked to, talk to the nurse. Okay, you talked to the nurse? Yes. But what about any family? Have you talked to any family? No. No? no. You just haven't had a chance to make any phone calls? I guess they ain't giving me one. Keep your voice up really loud because I'm old and I can't hear. They, they ain't giving me one when I came in. Oh, they didn't give you one only, when you came in? The only phone call I had is the one I received from y'all. Right the one that you made here when you were in the office? I'm sure though. Today they'll probably put you on the phone because um, I think you can only get on till eight or yeah eight in the morning till ten at night. So they may not even have opened up the phone access for you yet. But otherwise, you're hanging in there as best you can. All right. When I take you back, I'll make sure that I get you uh, a phone call. All right. And I'm gonna advise you that you're still under Miranda, right? You understand your rights, correct? Yes. Okay. So just, I'm going to go over them again. Uh, before. The detective reinstates that Armand is currently under Miranda and is briefly reminded of his constitutional rights to remain silent. Unaware of the suspect's cognitive deficiency, detectives utilize the Mutt and Jeff technique, otherwise known as good cop, bad cop. This will prove to be an effective strategy towards the end of this interaction. Okay, so you want to talk to us a little bit more? Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. Who is Khalid Lipscomb? That's my aunt. Oh, that's a woman? Yes, that's my aunt. Khalid Lipscomb. That's my aunt. Yesterday I told you. My grandmother is Cynthia Lipscomb. Right. My father, her, her son is my father, and she has a daughter. But her daughter is younger than me, so that's what makes it my aunt. So it's my father's sister. It's and spell her first name for me. K-E-L-E-A-D-A. -E oh, there's an A on the end of yeah, it. Kalita. That's oh, Kalita. Yes. Okay. And uh, how old is she? She's 21. All right. Um, so I have a question about the phones. Um, what is the phone number for this phone? And these are both of your phones? Yes. Okay. Is there one that you use more than the other one? Well, I just yesterday I stopped at East Cleveland gas station and I got this one on because that one turned off. Only thing I could do is, since I pay the phone bill, all the thing I could do is accept people. So if you call me, I can accept it. If you text me, I can accept it. But I can't, re I can't reply back because it's off. So I went to go pay this phone bill yesterday because it was only like $70. So I paid this phone bill yesterday, so that's why I, I, people was calling. That's why I use that phone now. Okay, so this phone is up and running. Yes. This one is up and running just for incoming texts. Texts and calls. And calls. Yes. Can you text back on this phone? No, I can't text back. When was this phone not working? It started yesterday morning. Started yesterday morning yes. about what time? Team, I'm gonna send me a bill. It's the text message team, I'm gonna send the bill. I said, you look in it, you see text message, you see team mobile. Uh, let me get this out. Okay, so they sent a text to you. Team mobile, yes. Um, Press it right there down at the bottom. Okay, uh, right here. Just uh, click the other one, and then okay. it's T-Mobile, right? That's T-Mobile. All right, so this was at 8.15 a.m. yesterday morning. T-Mobile message important. Your T-Mobile monthly service has been suspended. You will not be able to make calls, send text messages, or access data until you pay your past due balance and a $20 restore fee. Please now pay now or set up a payment arrangement. Okay, and so then after that, you got a text from my mother. Good morning. What you doing today? Okay, so you got that at nine thirty-three a.m. Yeah, but I can't text back. 
Okay, and no more texts after 9.33 a.m. from your mother? No. Who is your mother? I didn't meet her. Nakia Johnson. What is it? Nakia Johnson. Nakia Johnson? Yes. Spell her first name for me. And where is Nakia at? She's probably at work or home right now. I, 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 I couldn't text her back. Okay. So I still haven't well, talked to her yet. Okay, do, do you know if she knows what's going on? No, I stopped. What's, what's her phone number? It's just in there. It's, uh... So under mother, you have a phone number. Of... It should be two phone numbers. Oh, I just see one. Is but is that a good number for her? Yeah. Yes. Where does she live? <clears throat> on 105 and Superior, and Park Place Apartments. Okay, so wait a minute, your mother lives in Park Place Apartments? Yes. And you live in an apartment complex? Yes. What's the name of your apartment complex? That's the same one. She lives in the same apartment complex? Yes, my mother. It's my mother, my brothers, my mother, me, my mother, Rick, Ricky, that's my brother, and James, Raymond, that's my brother. Ricky and James are your brothers, same last yes. name? Yes. And they're in Park Place too? Yes. So do they live with... Uh, no, they Nakia? Have, they have their own separate apartments. Oh, they all do? Yes. Okay, so what's your apartment number? Uh, my mother's not the same one I was staying with. My mother's 1460. That's the apartment number. Wait a minute. The you apartment. live with your mother? I thought you lived with your grandmother. I live with my grandmother. I go back and forth to different houses, like my grandmother's house or my mother's house. Like my grandma goes to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. Though Armand is currently handcuffed to the chair, this does not restrict his kinesics. This can simply be attributed as a mechanism in order to help elaborate his recollection. The detective begins to ascertain who exactly lives inside the apartment complex, along with trying to understand which phone was being used to further corroborate the information police has gathered. Okay, and he, so the whole family's living in that building. Yeah, it's like a, like a... It's like a gated, not a gated community, but it's like a apartment complex. My mother, she stayed there. James, he have his own apartment. Ricky, he have his own apartment down the street. He don't stay in the apartment. He stay down the street. So he's not in the same complex. Uh, he's down the street. Yes. At 105 in Superior. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So then, let, I just want to go back to this one second here. And th does this code stand for something? 04-1493, is that somebody's birthday? Mine. That's your birthday? Yeah, 4 Okay. So then your mother and then the next text. This is someone expressing their condolences. That's my cousin that was in, that's my cousin I May? just met. Yes, I, I just met her when we went to Detroit for the family reunion. Okay, so this is your phone, that's your phone, and you had these in your possession uh, Monday night, correct? That one was on the charger at home, but I had this one. Okay, so this one, I had that one which one was on you, this one or this one? This one. This one was yes. on you? Yes. And this one was at home in the charger? Yes. Okay, and what time was this on the charger from? Okay, because we looked at this one, uh -huh. and there's no activity on this phone from April till it was, yesterday. It been off. It been off. Mm -hmm. That's when this was phone was on. Mm -hmm. That one was off. That one cut off. That one got turned back on. And what time did you turn this on? Yesterday in East Cleveland, around. Is one is 12 is the end of 11 12 is in there and yes yesterday morning yes so you went to where to turn this on east cleveland gas station across from shaw high school what's the name of the gas station uh, sunoco it's directly across from shaw high school how did you get there uh my, my father 
Your father took you to the gas station? Yes. To turn this on? Yes. So this wasn't working? No. But this one was? Yes. Okay. The detective begins to inquire about Armand's whereabouts the day of the homicides. Though Armand provides little to no resistance when divulging this information, he is not entirely truthful as he seems to be leaving out some important information that police are already aware about. You are saying this one was at home on the charger, yes. but you had this one with you? Yeah, because I got Wi-Fi on that. Anywhere I go with Wi-Fi, I have internet or access to internet. But you would have Wi-Fi on this, too. Right, but the bill, when it, like, when you got an iPhone, when you get pass through the bill, like, the Wi-Fi stop, your music, iTunes, all that stop. And so you can't use music or you can't, all you can do is call. You can't do nothing else. You can't play music or nothing because you got to pay the bill. And that's why I passed due my bill, a $20 store fee. So that's why. On, on this one? On that one, yes. But again, it's working as far as receiving and receiving, sending text. Receiving text and receiving calls. Receiving calls receiving and text. receiving text. Yes. If you try to call your phone off my phone, it won't work. But if you try to call my number off your phone, it will work. Okay. Um, so this phone's at home on the charger, and where is this phone? At home on the charger? No, that was with me. Okay, and where did you go? When? Uh, Monday night. Monday night. I was with, I was with Khalid, I was Khalid off work, she was with her boyfriend. <clears throat> I was in East Cleveland, she came to pick me up from East Cleveland. I was at home, I stayed home, my grandma was there, my father was there, Khalid was there. So, you want to say yeah, so um, remember I told you yesterday we're, we're trying to eliminate you right. out of this whole realm? Yes. So we went out to your house out there yesterday in, in, um, in Cleveland, I think it was East Cleveland or Cleveland Heights. Uh -huh. Spoke with your mom and your grandmother. Yes. And, them, and they provided us a phone. Right. Can you tell us whose phone this is? Kalita. Kalita? Yes. So that's not yours. No, it's Kalita's. Okay. And what's the phone number do that you phone? Know the, do you know the, how to access this phone? I don't know how to get, I don't know how to get in it. You don't know how to get no, in it? No, that's Kalita's phone, no. So you're not the owner, it's Kalita's? Yeah, no. What's her phone number? Uh, and Kalita is your aunt? My aunt, yes. Okay. She just is not. that phone on, Greg? Um, no. Turn it on, please. See if I can. Let's see if I can. What? Siri's not available. You're not connected to the internet. I'm holding. So can you explain to me? Well, we were, we we're trying to eliminate you out of this. Remember I told you we were trying to, to look through the phones and everything. Yes. So we got an extra phone and that's what I was asking you about. But you're saying that's not your phone, so no, you can't no, give no. me permission to open it. No. And you don't know how to get into it. No. You don't know the code on this phone? No. All right, is that her? Yes, that's my aunt. After presenting this piece of information to the suspect, detectives begin to cross-examine Kalita's statements with Armand's alibi. As Kalita stated, Armand texted and requested to be picked up at a nearby McDonald. Video surveillance would capture Kalita arriving at the agreed location, and the suspect is seen getting into the vehicle leaving the area. You sure? Are you sure that's the number? Yes, because if you look in here, I have Okay. All right, so um, Kalita got off of work from where? Carvana. Where? Carvana. Carvana? Yes. And where is that at? Uh, out Euclid. In the city of Euclid or on Euclid S Avenue? Euclid Avenue. Okay. And that was Monday night at what time? at 3 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock. In the afternoon? Yes. Okay. And then what? Then I called her, asked what she was at. She came. She came. You called her from which phone? I called her from my phone. This phone, okay. 
And I called her, she asked me what she got. She said, I'm getting off work. I'm like, okay, I need the keys to get in the house, my grandmother's house. So she came and got me. I went to my grandmother's house. Speak up. I went to my grandmother's house. Okay, where did she come and get you from? East Cleveland. Where were we at in East Cleveland? Uh, on my, like, Taylor. is a Taylor Street. Mm -hmm. um, and she came and picked me up. Her and her boyfriend came and picked me up and took me to the house. And then when I got to the house, my grandma was there. My father was there. What time did they pick you up? Uh, around, like, four-ish. Okay, where were you at? I was just in uh, EC smoking. Just standing on the corner? No, no, no. It's not no corner. Like, it's where the park at. Like, it's like, there's a park right there. So I was walking. It was five minutes away from my grandma's house. What's the name of the park? Cal Ravine Park. Ravine? Yes. Okay. So she comes and picks you up. Yes. I was walking towards the house. She come pick me up, take me to the house. Okay. I said, I need the keys. And you don't have the keys to your grandmother's place? Yeah, but the keys is, I think y'all got to know, but the keys I had, I left in the house. I left my keys in the house. So when she come get me, I went to go get my keys in the house, grab my keychain. She let me in the house. My grandma was in the kitchen cooking food. My father in there getting the stuff cleaned up out the living room. And then I was in there, I was sitting there talking to my grandmother. And then I, fell, I put my phones on the charger. I fell asleep. I woke up, sent the text that I had. Okay, let me stop you there. Put the phones on the charger? Yes. Both phones? Yes, because it's a nice, where I sleep at, it's a nice thing right here. You have your it's, own room? No, no, it's not my room. It's just my father's room. He was staying there. Okay, so when your father's not there, you stay there? Yes, sometimes, yes. Or okay. I sleep downstairs on the couch, watch TV, or but most of the time I'm upstairs in the bedroom. So it's upstairs. How many bedrooms in this place? Four. There's four? Well, it's not all used as bathroom because only two rooms have beds. After briefly inquiring into Armand's whereabouts throughout the day, detectives purposely asks questions they already know the answers to, as they know that Armand was not picked up at a park as he claims. However, the detective digresses and continues to inquire further into the living quarters, along with attempting to ascertain a timeline to further corroborate cell phone data. Your grandmother Cynthia's, yes. the other one is your father's. Yes, and then there's one is a back room, like a sitting room. And then one is Kalita's, but Kalita's one was just a closet with covers closed because she don't have no bed in there. So she stays there too sometimes? No, she stays there. She does? Yes. She just Permanently? Sleep, yes, she just sleeps in the bed with my grandmother. She sleeps with your grandmother? Yes. Okay. Um, so you went into your father's room, put the phones on the charger, yes. and you went to bed? Yes. What time sleep. did you go to bed? I went to sleep. Wrong. Uh, um, I can't give you a specific time. Um, well, do you have a TV in this room? Yes. Were you watching TV? No. No. What were you the doing? Wife, I don't plug up. I went around. I smoked my mom on the porch. Came in, went in there, ate some, got something to eat. Went upstairs, see my grandma. She was in there, laying down eating. I went in the room, took my shoes off, took, took my clothes off, lay down, went to sleep. Woke up the next morning because I heard my grandma. I went downstairs. She got to be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I went downstairs, looked out the window. The window I'm looking out of is the driveway. See her truck gone. So I went back upstairs, grass on the eat. Went back upstairs, looked at my phone, seen the text message. So, again, approximately, what time did you go to sleep? Around like seven, between seven to like 9.30, 9, 9.30. So 7 p.m. to 9.30? No, be between that time. Oh, between, between those time, two hours, hours 7 p.m. to 9.30. Yes. Okay. And then... Was you it dark? It was getting there. It wasn't totally dark, but it was getting there. Okay. So are these townhouses, condos, or apartments? Apartments. Okay. So you don't do any maintenance around there, do you? No. Only, the only thing I do around is my grandma house, cut her grass, clean up, plant the flowers, the neighbor next door. You're talking door. about Cynthia? Yeah. The neighbor next door. I help put mulch down on the yard. You know what I'm saying? But this is an apartment complex and you mow the lawn? No, that's my grandmother's house. 
grandmother's house. Okay, so we're talking about Cynthia. Yes, Cynthia, yes. And this is where you stay sometimes, yes. your father stays sometimes, yes. and your aunt stays sometimes. Right. No, Kalita lives there. Kalita lives there. Yes, I'm sorry. Sorry. Kalita sorry. Lives there. She just doesn't have a bed. She right, because her room, our friend would spend the night, her friend brought bed, bus to the bed, had to throw the bed out. That's why she don't got a bed, a bed in her room. That's why she sleeps with my grandmother. Okay, but you actually mow the lawn there? At my grandmother's house, yes. At what? 10 night 10. Yes. Why doesn't the uh, maintenance do that? I don't know. My grandma, we don't pay them to do that. I cut the grass. Okay, so there, yes. she has an actual lawnmower that she keeps there? Yes. Where does she keep it? In the garage. Okay. I've never heard of an apartment complex where you have to do your own lawn. Most of the time it's done, the apartment complex hires a company that comes in and does it. Right. So why are you doing it? Because it's my grandma's house. I'm cutting her, gra I'm cutting her grass. But if somebody else is doing everybody's lawn, I don't understand why you would just do it. Um, <clears throat> all I do is cut my grandma grass. I stand my, I live with my grandma's house. Okay. The detective expresses the oddity of Armand cutting his own grass, as opposed to the landlord hiring people to do so. After this confusion subsides, detectives begin to inquire about the day after the homicide, as Armand claims he received three text messages. One that was sent from his girlfriend, Kira, stating something rather disturbing. And so you fell asleep between 7 and 9.30, and then you woke up about what time? About 6, 6.15. A.M. A.M. And that's, now we're talking about Tuesday morning. Right. And that was yesterday morning. Right. And you said you got up and you looked to see if you're... Because I heard a car in the driveway, so I went to the driveway window, look out the window. Her car was gone, her truck. So I'm like, okay, she went to work. So I went back up, I went to the kitchen, went back upstairs to the kitchen, got something to eat, went back upstairs, look at my phone. I said, I had a text message. I look at it, one was from Kira. One was from my mother, one was from T-Mobile. T-Mobile was basically telling me I couldn't make no calls or make no text messages. My mother called, my mother texted me. Go ahead, I'm listening. My mother texted me, saying, good morning, what you doing? Tell me hard. Test me on my team mobile, my mom, and my girl. Carol. Yes, they all test me that morning, but I couldn't respond to neither one. Okay. Um, so you were unable to text at all. On Monday morning. Monday morning. Yeah. When? When? No. Monday morning. The phone was on. The phone shut off Tuesday, early morning. That's when the phone shut off. That's when I got my T-Mobile message. Okay. So all day Monday you could text. Yes. I could text. And receive text. Yes. Okay. So. Um, Tuesday morning, about what time it shut off when they sent this text? Uh, when they, probably like a little bit before they sent that text. Cause they, the phone, when they cut your phone off, they automatically get shut off. And then when T-Mobile stores open up, that's when they shoot you the text. Like, okay, your phone is off. You can't make calls. You can't make text messages. But you said when you got up, you saw the text. I saw Kira, my mother, and other texts. Okay. That's what I, but I couldn't text nobody back. Then how did you receive this condolences from May today at 8.29 a.m.? When your phone is off, you can receive texts and calls. Okay. Sorry. You just can't, I can't respond. give it back. I understand that. Okay. I, I, that's what okay. I'm trying to explain. Sorry. I can't give it back. Got okay. it. Okay. I can't give it back. I got you. So you wake up and you see this text from Kira. 
and it says, Armin, I let Michael come see Aubrey, and he trying to burn my house down. Please help me. Yes. Okay. So, did you know who Michael is? No. I, all, I, all I knew when I was in locked up, she said, that's Aubrey's father. That's Aubrey's father. They've been having issues and back in the past. But when I came home, I never met him. Never seen him. Don't want to, can't tell you what he looked like. This didn't concern you, that text? Yes, but when I this what when I went to EC gas station, I woke up, oh my father took me to EC gas station. Mm -hmm. Got that phone on. So mm -hmm. when I got that phone on, now you call me Martez called me. That's Kira little brother. Where you at? Where you at? My mama just got a text saying Michael did something with boom. I mean, where y'all at? I'm panicking. So if I'm we looked in out. this phone, we would be able to see those Miss calls. calls. Yes, you see Martez. His name Tez, but his real name Martez. You will see Naya. Naya is the sister. And you will see Naila. Me calling Naila. Naila, what's going on? Naila, what's going on? Is Armand tries to get detectives to believe his fictitious story. They decide to digress, avoiding any form of confrontation, as this may cause the suspect to shut down entirely and request counsel. Instead, the detective begins to inquire into the clothing Armand was wearing the day of the homicide in order to now corroborate surveillance footage. Okay. Um, when you go to sleep at night, do you, how do you sleep? In your drawers, in pajamas? Drawers is, is hot upstairs. The, hot, the, hot, the upstairs is more hotter than downstairs. So I turn the fan on, see what my drawers. Okay. And um, Monday night when you went to bed, you plugged these two phones in. What did you have on? What clothes did you take off? Uh, I took off a t shirt, a plain white t shirt. Like that? Yeah, because I got a whole bunch of folded up on my uh, stand. Plain white t shirt, some uh, boxers, Here, some boxer briefs. Some boxer briefs. I had these tennis shoes on right here, and I have I have on some uh some black jogging pants. Some black jogging pants. Yes. And when you woke up Monday morning and looked out the window to see if Cynthia had left, what clothes did you put on? The same clothes? Same. Or clothes. did you change clothes? When I Monday Tuesday morning. Tuesday. Yeah, I put this on. This what I had on. Okay, Tuesday morning yeah, you put that on. on. Same shoes? Yeah, my same shoes, my, my Nikes. Okay. Um, and you never left the house with either these phones between the hours of, let's say, 9.30, because that's when you said you went to sleep, uh -huh. between 7 and 9.30. You never took these phones off of the charger and you never left your grandmother's house in Cleveland Heights. No. You never went anywhere. No. And when you woke up in the morning, were these two phones still on the charger on the nightstand next yes. to where you yes. were sleeping? Yes, because it's like a power strip that with different plugs and that's where it plug up at. So these are your phones. Nobody else uses your phones, right? No. So I'm asking you. No. Okay. So um Again, I want to verify that this phone number is 5071712. Yes. Okay, so um, these are calls that you received yesterday, which would have been Tuesday. Yes. Is Martez. Martez. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Can you adjust these, please? Like my hand. Can you turn it this way? No. Yeah, we can. We can get your wrist in. You mean straighter? Yeah, straighter yes. Well, you figure out how you want them to be comfortable, because I'm going to put them the way I want them when I put you back. Okay, um, so you were in possession of this phone all night long. Yes. Well, I can tell you that after looking <coughs> at cell tower information in connection with this phone, 
that you were not at home. No, I was at home. No. Listen closely. I'm missing. I was at home. No, you weren't. This phone went to the air area of East 63rd Street, and this phone went into the house. No, I was at home. I never went to the house. I was at of home. Of Kira and your baby. No, no, listen. I was at home. No, listen to me. I'm, I'm listen. Listen, I'm, just pay attention. Okay. The phone records aren't going to lie. The phone records show that this phone left your house. I was at home. Oh, y'all don't understand. I was at home. I was at home with my grandmother. I was at home. I was at home. That's what I was at. That's what I was at. No. That's... No, well, and you know why? Let's stop the lies right now. I'm not lying. Can, yeah. can I talk to my grandmother, please? Please. Well, we'll, wait, we'll let you talk to her. The phone left the house, and the phone left the house with you. And you went over there. No, I did not go. And you killed her. No, I did not. The only thing I do not understand is how you could possibly burn your children no, I alive. Did, I did not. Can you explain that to I me? I did not. I Listen, did not. I have video of you. We have video of you. I have, I have your gram or your aunt talking to us, telling us that she picked you up in the area at the time of this occurrence. But no, no, no. It was not wearing right. the same clothes that's in that video. What's same clothes? We have a video of you. Oh, no, I did not do nothing. I need okay. To no, I need to talk. I need to talk. Listen. I need to talk to, I need to, talk to, I, need to talk, I need to talk to my lawyer. I Armand. need to talk to, I need to talk to, my, can I talk to my lawyer? No, I need to talk to a lawyer. I need to talk to a lawyer. I need to talk to a lawyer. As Armand is being confronted with this evidence, we observe our first glimpse of raw emotion as he begins to panic incoherently. This inevitably provokes Armand to retract and request the presence of his lawyer before continuing. This request is acknowledged and the interrogation begins to conclude. Okay, Armand, I'm so sorry for your loss. I just can't understand how this lawyer. could happen. I need to talk to my lawyer. Okay. I'm I'm just I'm just expressing myself here. Okay. I do not understand and by the grace of God I truly truly wish that you could give us some explanation. The only thing that I can think of is that you were jealous because she was That's not it. That's not it. It's an alarm. She was jealous, or you, I'm sorry, you were jealous because she was with somebody else. That's I mean, case, I can That's the only... case, you can look at my phone, I have other females that I was texting and talking to. That's fine, but this phone went to her house. <coughs> You're hitting, look, let me show you. You're hitting off of these towers. These towers, this is her house. This is tower number one, this is tower number two. This is tower number three. They're all right by her house. That's this phone hitting off towers all around her house. No, can I talk to my grandmother, please, ma'am? Yeah, I, I'm just I'm expressing myself here. I, I just don't understand how your jealousy and rage oh, would cause you to kill her I did I did not kill her I did not kill her I don't own no gun I did not kill her I did not do nothing and and then the set the house on fire I, I don't understand why you didn't take those kids with you why hurt them I when you're hurt, mad at her I did not hurt nobody um I can understand being jealous I can understand um wanting to hurt her but not the kids. I just don't understand that part of it. Uh, I, I mean, in my mind, it's really hard for me, but I, did not. I, did not. I can only think that maybe you were can just striking her, out and trying to hurt someone. Well, I, I don't understand it. We've got the cell record show. Sure. You're telling me that this phone <coughs> never left your house, but it did. It traveled. Your own aunt is saying she picked you up that morning from that area right there and she took you home. So you can lie all you want. I just, I, I mean, if, if there is any way you could 
give us an explanation so we can explain to her mother and her brother how this whole thing came about. The only thing I can think of is you were jealous. No, I'm not jealous. Nothing. I don't be jealous. Excuse me, can I ask? Excuse me, man. Can I still yes. get a call you said I can get, please? Yeah, but we're we're gonna take you back. If you have no explanation for this, I mean, I, I'm, we're we're not going to come and talk to you again. I think we this have. This is it. You, you get your opportunity here. right now to, to come clean, and, and you know, I understand you you don't want to speak with us anymore, and I'm not going to speak with you any further. But this is it. This was it. If you want to talk to us, you can always come call us back or whatever. But you're telling us you want to speak to a lawyer. I'm not going to stop that. We're done. The male detective decides he's heard enough and takes the initiative to completely end the conversation before transporting Armand back to his cell. The female detective expresses a few final thoughts and tries to understand the motive behind his actions. Okay. I, I, I just need to talk to my grandma. Now, I can't control that. You're gonna, you, you, can have, you can contact an attorney or whatever. Um, but that, that's, we're done with this okay. is, is right now. Okay. I don't see how. Try to accuse me of something I didn't do. Like that, that's what I don't get. Like try to accuse me of something I didn't do. We know you did it. I did not do nothing. I did not do nothing. I'm telling you I did not do nothing. I told you from the beginning I, know. I did not do nothing. But everything is pointing in the other direction. Your own relative is saying, she picked you up. Your own phone records are putting you in the area. I don't, I don't know how you can dispute that, Armin. I'm just trying to understand as a woman, and I, I mean, I've felt jealousy and rage before, but I certainly couldn't hurt my children. Okay, let me show you this. That's her address right there. Here's your phone hitting off of these towers. They're not over here. You're not out here. You're not over there. Your phone is hitting to the this side of the tower. This side of the tower. Not the back side, not the other side. This side, and there's her house. And I think, I think that you shot and killed him because he caught you leaving the house. Then, then we see you leaving and going back to Cleveland Heights. So this is her house and this is your phone. And these are the dates. Can you see the dates here? Yes. 7 9 2019. Excuse me. And then this is your phone number. And then that is the time that you were back home at 8.27 in the morning. These were all same phone number the day before, which was, you see the date, 7, 8, 19. You see the times? All right, we're gonna. Can you say the phone calls to my grandma, like you said? Huh? I don't know. Skin, uh, hold on. What are you going to tell your grandmother? I already talked to my grandma. You, you said I can get a phone call and get back to my grandma. Yeah. Tell your grandmother you're going to, you're going to be charged eventually with this crime. Tell her that. In September 2022, the trial of Armand Johnson would soon commence, and Armand's criminal history, along with the psychiatric evaluation, were the prime topics of discussion. The state would argue that Armand was fully aware of his actions, despite his intellectual disability. The fact that someone has served periods of incarceration can also affect their ability to obtain employment, is that correct? Yes. And he did have periods where he did odd jobs, had a job at a hotel, is that right? Uh, the only formal employment I'm aware of is two weeks at a hotel. He would talk about like shoveling snow and mowing lawns. Um, he's able-bodied, correct? Yes. He told you about the ability to go to the hospital and try to um, establish new primary care with the doctor, correct? I don't believe he told me that. That came from the records. 
Um, so there's a record that he tried to establish medical treatment by getting a primary care physician, correct? Yes. I mean, is that something you would expect somebody with a fifth or fourth grade reading and math level to be able to do? If their mom set up the appointment. Well, this was when he was an adult, right? He was 19, according to your records. Right, but if, if just because he went doesn't mean he was the one who set up the appointment. But you don't have any information to indicate that he wasn't. Yep. However, the defense would rebuttal that since Armand is at a cognitive disadvantage, he would have never committed these crimes if he never experienced severe childhood trauma. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where do we place Armand? Or what are the things that you've described to us about Armand, about family or neglect or education or lack of being treated for the inability to understand? How do all those things fit into Maslow's hierarchy of needs? So I would say that at points of Armand's life, hit, some of his physiological needs were not met, right? If he didn't have clean clothes, wasn't bathed, um, didn't always have reliable food, things like that. His place he lived was sometimes had hazardous conditions. So there were definite points where his physiological needs were not met, not all of his life, but points. Um, so when th that's the case, you know, that's really all that you can think about is getting that next meal or feeling like, you know, you can have a place to go to the bathroom. Um, but when those are met, then you can kind of go up to the next level. So there were times when his physiological needs were taken care of, and he, um, you know, we think about safety, there were, you know, whether it was safety in DYS, where there was a lot of violence in his neighborhood, which was a high crime neighborhood, and not safe to be outside. Um, you know, just feeling safe was kind of a, a daily struggle. Um, and then, you know, just with, knowing that your needs are going to be taken care of, right? I already talked about different instances where they weren't, so not really trusting that even though, yeah, we have a roof over our head, like, is mom going to be there, or what, what's going to be the caliber of that interaction? Um, so I'd say there was large periods of our mom's life where those safety needs were not met. And then, you know, with love and belonging, I mean, our mom describes having a very close relationship with his aunt, particularly his grandma, his father, and his mother as well, um, and, you know, feels very close to them. And, you know, that, I would say, is, is maybe as, as high as Armand has been able to get on that during different points of his life. But once, you know, you're missing one of those lower levels, um, it can take up a lot of your energy, right? So even if you have food, you can be kind of hyper-focused on when's my next meal coming. Even if you are safe in a locked room, you can still feel like someone's out to get you. So even if the needs are met, there still you know, can be a, a really lingering impact on the times when they weren't met. Due to the severity of the crimes, the death penalty was applicable but unable to be an appropriate sentence, as this would directly violate the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Consider subscribing to GBP Under 30 Minutes, where I plan to present a summation of these trials, which will be easily digestible for the viewers who are interested. Armand was eventually convicted of a crime by a jury and was sentenced to serve four consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Armand Johnson is currently being held in the Northeast Ohio Correctional Center.